One of our viewers saw a story we recently did and got in touch with us, and thankfully, not to complain. He had spotted something in an old piece of film that he saw in the story of the 1949 wedding of Vice President Alvin Barkley and St. Louis widow Jane Hadley here in her hometown. And he told us he had an old car that we might like to see. Well, he didn't have an old car. He had a lot of old cars. Uh, there's obviously more than a car here. Is this, this your collection here? I mean, what? It's a wonderfully preserved, mainly original, unrestored grouping of cars <laughs> that have wonderful St. Louis connections. That, yeah. Uh, Gerald Birschbacher has a building that is just filled with old cars. And if he invites you in, it's best to spend some time because this is not just about the make and the model and the year. Every car here comes with a story, usually a St. Louis story. And the next one behind it is a 1916 model Chevrolet, the oldest documented Chevrolet model 490, selling for $490, uh, the oldest one in existence. Wow. And made in St. Louis by the Gardner family who had made banner buggies mm -hmm. and then later on made the Gardner automobile. But the car we came to see was back in the corner. It's a 1949 Packard, and I already knew part of the story because it was the car used at the Hadley Barkley wedding to chauffeur the newlyweds. And while it appeared only briefly in the story we did, Perschbacher recognized it immediately because, well, he owns it. Are you sure this is the car you saw in that film? There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Absolutely no doubt whatsoever because it was the mayor's car that was used. This car was owned by the city of St. Louis for Mayor Darst and later Mayor Tucker. And after that, it picked up all sorts of people, including not just Dwight D. Eisenhower when he was a general after the war, but also Truman while he was president. And it's still very much original to the time when Truman sat in it at least three times that we know of. Could have been four or five times total. So this is, this is a big car. Would we consider this a limousine or I mean what? This, this and a limousine had the same 148 inch wheelbase. Wow. Yeah. And Packard was a luxury car maker. Uh, they are older than Rolls Royce. In fact, I like to tell people that they say, well, Packard was the Rolls Royce of America. No, really, Rolls Royce was the Packard of Great Britain. In the front, there was a chauffeur. In the back, a very comfortable upholstered seat and another one that could fold out for additional passengers. There are jump seats, correct. Yeah. And in that... Oh, and a phone. And a <laughs> phone, and the phone has a connection that goes to the uh, bottom section of the seat. If you need to... I could poke my head in. You definitely. I'm going to poke my head in. That's Because i got to look around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this is the original that, handset? Headset? That is the headset for the telephone, for the right. rear seat. So who knows what type of DNA from a president might be on there, right. or at least from right. two mirrors. Well, now mine. And now <laughs> yours. And I imagine it was a comfortable ride. Oh, definitely. This thing was a luxury car. A luxury car fit for mayors, vice presidents, presidents but not an armored car. Times were different. Look at President Harry Truman riding through crowds in St. Louis in 1950 in this convertible. Pretty exposed, with a guy just a few feet away taking these home movies, and that was okay. I mean, this is not a bulletproof car. No, they, they didn't have many of those at this point. Yeah. Around 1960, the city was done with its 1949 Packard, and the mayor's chauffeur became the proud owner of this really big car. And uh, he would take uh, certain uh, friends uh, out back to church and he'd ride them along. You could get, you know, a good number of passengers in here. After that, there were two more owners before Perschbacher bought it. The interior is dusty, but in pretty good shape. But as you can see, the paint is a different story. Eventually, do a repaint on the car. It's yeah. sad that it fell into some disrepair from being in long-term storage before we came to own the car. But you might be wondering, as I was, could this presidential Packard ever run again? Perschbacher says yes, it was running when he got it. And he says it's in solid, serviceable condition, could be drivable in what he calls a few diligent months of effort. But he might not get to it for a while because, after all, it's just one of many cars here with many great stories. How many? 
total? I, my answer to that is I don't know, and is my wife likes really it that way. <laughs> I really don't have the count. I really don't have yeah. it in mind. Yeah. There are some that are parts cars, and there are some that need everything, and so they're not operational. Do you consider that a car? Do you yeah. consider it a project? Yeah, and you're not done. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Good Lord's with me as long as the good Lord's with me, and you know, we'll see how far this yeah, goes. And there's another car to be discovered somewhere. Uh, there's probably always. Yeah. But I'm pretty pleased with how many we've discovered up to this point. See the story about the St. Louis wedding of Vice President Alvin Barkley and Jane Hadley and the whirlwind May December romance. Just go to the Living St. Louis Facebook page.